and welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. Years ago, I began recording the bedtime stories I told my children every night. Now, I'd like to share those stories with you. I hope you enjoy my stories for wonderful children. There's a little girl named Winella, and she lives in a very special house full of many special rooms. But the most special room of all is Winella's room. Because everything in it is pink and blue. The walls are pink and the floor is blue. Her pillow is pink and her bedspread is blue. Her cat is pink and her dog is blue. Everything in her room is pink and blue except for one thing. The ceiling fan. The ceiling fan. Right. The ceiling fan. And what color is the ceiling fan? Like? Purple! One morning, Juanella woke up bright and early. And she stretched. And she looked at the clock. And she saw that it was nine o'clock. And she thought, how strange. My alarm didn't go off. So she stretched. And she went down, she slid downstairs. And hey, you she can walked say into what color the alarm was. She walked into the room. Which color? Where? What color is her alarm? Her alarm clock is blue with pink numbers. She walked into the room where her mommy was. What's the, face? And What's she, the color of the face of the clock? It's blue. She and walked what? into the room. Her she walked into the room. Was, was her hair? Look up. hair is sort of a dark blonde color. She walked into the room where her mommy was, and she tried to say, "Hi, mommy. How are you this morning?" But she opened her mouth, and her lips moved, and no sound came out. And she looked at her mommy's face, and she could see that her mommy looked very worried. And her mommy tried to talk back to her, and her lips moved, and no sound came out. And then when Ellen noticed, there was no sound anywhere at all. Everything was completely silent. There were no birds singing outside. There were no crickets chirping. Wally was in the the dining room pouring his milk, and there was no sound as the milk went into the glass. Wanella frowned, and her mommy motioned to her to get some cereal and eat her breakfast. So Wanella did. She ate her breakfast as quickly as she could, and then she decided that she needed to try to figure out what was going on. So she went upstairs to her room. She got a pad of paper and a pencil, and she brought it downstairs, and she wrote on it. She said, what's happening, Mommy? And her mommy wrote back, I don't know what's happening. All the sound is gone. Wanella wrote down, this is terrible. Does anyone know how, it's ha how this happened? And her mommy shook her head. Wanella said, mm hmm. Wanella decided that what she was going to do was see if she could find someone who could help. And when she thought of everyone who she knew who might be able to help, the first the thought of the, wish of the purple wish dragon, that's right. So she went downstairs, and when she got to the bottom of the stairs, she could see that the, the sad bear was sitting there just crying and crying with big tears rolling down his face, but he wasn't making any noise at all. When Ella just patted him on the head as she went by and then gave him a little hug to try to make him feel better, then she went on in to where the purple wish dragon was, she opened and closed the door since there was no point in knocking, since it wouldn't make any sound anyway. Where and was the wish dragon? The wish dragon was in the, the room with the purple door, just like she always was. When Nella wrote on her pad, Sarah May, I mean May Sarah, do you know what has happened to all the sound? And the purple wish dragon shook her head no. And when Ella said, I need to be able to converse with people. Can you make it so I can hear what other people are thinking? And May Sarah shook her head again. And 
Winella wrote, Why not? And the purple wish dragon took her claw and scratched on the paper. Because you have to wish out loud for me to be able to grant your wish. And if you can't talk, then I can't grant your wish. And Winella said, Oh. She said, Can you think of anyone else who might know what's happening? May scratched on her paper. Maybe you could go ask Fliberty Chibbit. So, Winella went back and she got on the Cat's Paw Highway and she turned around three times, but she couldn't say the magic words to make it work. So she couldn't use the Cat's Paw Highway. Why? Because you have to be able to say Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, take me where I want to go. And she couldn't say it because she couldn't make any sound. So she thought a minute. She thought, oh, how else could I get to Flippity Gibbet's palace? Can you girls think of how else she might be able to get to Flippity Gibbet's palace? Bicycle. She could do a bicycle. Who else could help her? Help her get there fast. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe someone. May. Maybe somebody could fly her there. May Sarah good. Maybe, or who else? I don't know. Who else flies when Ella places? Lives up on the roof. Joey. Joey. That's what Wanella thought of. She dashed into the house and she ran up the stairs. She took her pad and her pencil with her. She gently shook Joey's shoulder until he woke up. And then she wrote on the pad, Something has happened and all the sound in the world is gone. She said, I need you to fly me to... She wrote down, I need you to fly me to Liberty Jibbet's castle so we can try to find out what happened. So... She got on, Joey shook his head, yes, nodded, and Winella got on his back, and they flew up, up, up into the air, and Joey went his very fastest, and they flew, and they flew, and they flew at top speed, and pretty soon, they were over the jungle where Flippity Gibbet's palace was, and Joey circled down to land, and Winella had been hoping that maybe the sound wasn't missing everywhere, that maybe... Flippity Chippet's palace had sound, but no, when they landed, there were no birds singing or monkeys chattering in the jar jungle. When Ella took her pad and paper and went inside, there was Flippity Chippet laying on the, laying on his throne. He had a box in front of him. It was a silver box, and it had a hole in it, and on it there were seven golden strings strung across it. And it sort of looked a little bit to Anella, like sort of a kind of lap harp. And, but it was the most beautiful lap harp she'd ever seen in her life. It was fancy with drawings of fairies around the edges. And... Fairies? Yes, there were, there were, there were little drawings of fairies all around the edges of the lap harp. She waved to Flippity Gibbet, and he gave her a big tiger smile and motioned with one big paw that she could come over. She wrote on her pad, Flippity Gibbet, I don't know what's happened. All the sound in the world is gone. Do you know what's happened? Do you know how we can fix it? And Flippity Gibbet nodded his big head. He took his claw, and he scribbled on her pad, and he wrote, There is trouble in the land of treble. And when Ella wrote, Treble? What's treble? And Flippity Gibbet wrote, Treble is the land where the music fairies live. And Ronella wrote, The music fairies? I've never heard of the music fairies. And Flippity Gibbet said, The music fairies are the fairies that bring all the sound. They are the guardians of the sound for the whole world. They work for the king of treble, the conductor. And Ronella said, Well, what happened? And Flippity Gibbet wrote, Well, I'm not sure. But there is also someone in treble who is not good. He's the misconductor. And I know that he has been trying for a long time to summon a great evil called the silence. And I am afraid that he may have found a way to summon the silence and prevent, uh. the, and prevent the fairies uh. from working their magic. Uh. And when Jack Ella, Frost. No, it's not Jack Frost. It's the misconductor, and he has summoned the silence. When Ella wrote, well, how can I help? And Flipperty Chippet wrote with his 
law. He said, this is the omni harp. It's, the, it's a magical musical instrument that has been entrusted to me for safekeeping by the conductor. He said, you must take the omni harp to the land of treble, and there you must use it to help the music fairies in any way you can and free them from the silence. And when Ella said, how can I get there? The cat's paw highway won't work for me. And she was writing this. And Joey doesn't know where, where the land of travel is. And Flippity Gibbet wrote, he said, I can make the cat's paw highway work without talking. I am the king of the cats here. And he handed her the Omni Harp. She took it in her hands. It was about the size of the lap harps that you girls have. It was sort of cool to the touch. And it was the most beautiful thing Winella had ever seen in her whole life. My she, she took it in her hand and she gently strummed her fingers across the strings. She didn't expect anything to happen because all the sound in the world was gone. But when she strummed across the lap harp, it made music. It went da 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 da. No one else said, "Oh." She didn't say. She wrote down. She wrote that so beautiful, Flippity Gibbet. And Flippity Gibbet scratched. She said, "Yes, we must hurry. Use it wisely." He walked back out to the cat's paw highway with her and when Ella stood on it she turned around three times and as she did Flippity Gibbet put his big paws on the highway and breathed over it with his sweet tiger breath and when Ella suddenly felt herself going very fast and there she was she looked around and she was in a beautiful land it was a land where the trees were growing musical instruments and the bushes were in the shape of musical instruments there was a bush that was growing a piano there were trees that were growing flutes and bells lap harps saxophones trumpets all sorts of things flying on the trees but when Nella could see immediately that there was something wrong it was silent here in the land of treble also she looked around and she could see that the sky was overcast and gray she thought, here I am in this strange land. Where am I going to find help? Where am I going to find the music fairies? She looked down at the lap harp and absentmindedly picked her fingers across the strings. La, 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 la. As she played that, it seemed like the dark mist that was in the land seemed to draw back a little bit, as if it didn't like the sound of the music. And as the mist drew back, Winella found that she could see further. And she saw that on the other side of the grove of bushes, there on the ground, was laying a fairy. The fairy was stretching and then stopped moving again. Winella walked over to her. She was dressed in beautiful yellow dress with green trim. It sparkled and she had beautiful golden wings. She carried in her hand a guitar and when Ella knew that she must have found one of the music fairies, she said, I wonder, I wonder how I wake her. She thought she had started to look like she was waking up a moment ago. I wonder why. Why do you think the fairy might have been waking up? What harp? The Omni Harp, she thought. Perhaps there's something in the Omni Harp. She looked down at the strings of the Omni Harp and she saw for the first time that there were seven strings and each string next to it had a name carved in it. And she read them off to herself. The names of the strings of the Omni Harp were Do, Re, me, fa, sol, la, and ti. And she thought, perhaps, perhaps playing the omni harp will wake the fairy. So, which string do you think she should play first, Rebecca? Do. She tried do. Do. Red. But 
the fairy didn't the fairy didn't move. Which string do you think she should try next, Dana? Uh, uh, la. La. She tried. La. And she played it. La. And the fairy's eyes snapped open. When Ella smiled, she played la again. And the fairy stretched. And the fairy opened her mouth and said, Thank you so much. I am La, the music fairy. Who are you? And when Ella tried to talk, but she couldn't. She tried to talk. She, she got out her pad and she wrote, she wrote, My name is Juanella. Flipperty Gibbet sent me with the Omni Harp to rescue you. And La sang, Rescue me, what has happened? Do you know? And Juanella said, She wrote down, I don't know what's happened. Flipperty Gibbet thinks that perhaps the misconductor succeeded in summoning the silence. And La blanched. She looked very frightened, and she said, Silence, the silence is terrible. We must not let the silence win. And when Alice said, I agree, um, she wrote, I agree, but what can I do? And Law said, You must take the harp and free my sisters. And Law said, Your sisters? How many sisters do you have? And Law sang, there are seven of us, the music fairies, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, Me, Myself, and T. And when Alice sang, said, do you have, wrote down, do you have any idea what's happened to them? And La shook her head no. When Alice said, I think I'm going to need some help for this. She said, I don't think I can defeat the silence and free your sisters alone. I'm going to have to go back and get my friends to help. She wrote all this. She said, it would help me a lot if I had a way to make a wish or a way to talk. Is there a way that you can help me do that? And Law nodded her head. She said, Here, Winella, you cannot talk, but let me sprinkle my music dust over you. And you will be able to sing one sore short song. And so La sprinkled the, the, the music dust over Winella's head. And Winella could feel herself get sort of tingly. And then she noticed something. She noticed that it was getting darker around her and the mist was getting thicker. And that it seemed like the quiet was getting sort of like a worrisome quiet. And when Nell looked around, she said, and she wrote down, she wrote, La, I think the silence is coming. And La saying, Quickly, Winella, escape. I'll be fine now that you have freed me. Take the Omni Harp and run. Run, Winella. And Winella ran back to the Cat's Paw Highway, but the fog was getting thicker around her and she had trouble finding it. And then she looked back, she saw Law take her guitar down and strum it, and strum it as she sang, and she sang, Oh, MacDonald had a farm, and as she sang, the fog seemed to recede back and get lighter, like it just didn't like the music, and it got Thinner. And when Ella could see the Cat's Paw Highway up ahead, she ran towards it. She ran as fast as she could, and she jumped onto it, and she sang a short song. She sang, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, take me where I want to go. And she spun around three times, and she went very fast, and she found herself in her own backyard. And that is the end of the first oh, part of Vanilla versus the silence and how she helped the music fairy. And wait, wait, wait. And tomorrow night, tomorrow night we will hear how Vanilla sang to her friends and got their help to free another music fairy. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created, told, and edited today's story. 
Questions and witty commentary were supplied by my children. The music was composed by Brandon Thompson. If you enjoy the show, please tell someone about it or leave a review on your podcast provider. Our email is storiesforwonderfulchildren at gmail.com. You can also contact us on Facebook or Twitter. I'll see you next time.